Hello everyone, and welcome to my first uh, official stream as me. Uh, before I get started with everything, uh, can someone in the channel please confirm that you can hear my voice? And that I'm coming across loud and clear. Appreciate it. Nerd! Yeah, totes. But can you hear the nerd? You can hear me. The video's doing okay. I saw a little pause there for a second. I'm going to screen. Uh, and then I'm going to jump over here to my browser. See if that switched. So uh, before I get started, what I was uh, hoping to do is to uh, introduce myself a little bit. I did a kind of a pre-run before, but I wanted to uh, just talk for a minute about who I am. So I never have to do it again. You, somebody could clip this for me. Uh, I am a developer located in the Pacific Northwest. I live in beautiful Olympia, Washington. Uh, my website that I've had for the last probably 10 years is I am not myself. Uh, you can pretty much find anything I've ever done uh, on this website. Uh, if you're looking for me on Twitter, uh, I also go by not myself. Um, you will notice this is a trend if you you work on a social media website and I can't get the username not myself. Uh, your site's probably dead to me, which which won't allow me to uh, get the not myself username. Some egg has it, so they're kind of dead to me, but. I want to be here for you guys. Let's see. You can hear me a little low on the overall sound. Let me uh, bump that up a bit. I can move the mic closer to my face. Did that help? <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, this is my uh, Twitter account. Uh, I've had it for a very long time, so uh, feel free to give me a follow. And as my Twitch username currently implies, I do work at Auth0. Uh, I'm a developer evangelist at Auth0. Uh, I did not start on the identity team. I started on a serverless team uh, for a product called Extend. Uh, and when that product was end of life, uh, I moved over to the identity team. Uh, and what does it mean to be an evangelist at, uh, at Auth0? Uh, one of my primary duties is I run the Seattle Identity and Security Meetup. So once a month we get together and talk about identity and security topics with guest speakers and, and that sort of thing. Uh, I also go to meetups out in the, the U.S. and conferences to, to speak as well. Uh, so the goal of this particular stream is that uh, I wanted to start building an application that I could obviously show off some Auth0 uh, features using. Uh, and I wanted to do that on a stream. Uh, and I started that uh, idea about 12 days ago. Um, and the I have no idea what this application is going to do, um, which is a great place to start building an application with. But I did have an idea of some of the technologies that I wanted to play with. Um, I know I want to build something uh, that uses Node. Um, I want to do something that uses uh, ASP.NET Core um, or .NET Core on uh, OS X, uh, which should be something relatively, uh, you know, not many streamers are doing that right now. Um, and maybe create a, a front end uh, using React. Uh, so anyway, back to the repository, which is uh, under my username, not myself, uh, Broxburn. Uh, and I spent uh, a good four hours coming up with that name for the project and let me wander you down that road. Uh, I knew I wanted to build an application on a stream. So I started looking for mythological gods or deities that uh, are related to streams. Um, I didn't find any. There are tons of gods and mythological figures related to the ocean or to mighty rivers, but very few that are related to streams. Um, but in that search, I came upon like this uh, mythological creature uh, based out of Scotland that uh, basically are like little seal monsters that can take human form and seduce men. I even forgot what the name of the creature was, but they, they live in streams. 
Um, so that got me looking at uh, places in Scotland. And I found this awesome uh, town named Broxburn that uh, is in Scotland. And the name Broxburn is a Scottishism for uh, badger, Brox being the badger, and burn being another word for stream. So I love that. So I just created the repo really fast uh, and found a, a nice spiffy image. And you'll notice in a lot of my repos that I talk about, I always have a huge header image that kind of sets the tone for me. Right. Uh, anyway, <laughs> I uh, also came in uh, this morning and started coming up with this idea of using the GitHub project system to talk about the things that I want to do on the stream. So this particular stream uh, is called uh, Broxburn getting started setting up the initial project. Uh, so I created a project around what I want to accomplish in the stream. Uh, and we're kind of doing the the top card that I have right now, explaining what Broxburn is. Uh, I also want to set up a basic project structure, um, create the React app, create the web API application, and ensure they all communicate together uh, well with each other. Uh, and then at the end, take any questions. And I think this will take about an hour. I have no idea if that will actually take about an hour. Uh, so without much further ado, let's let's jump right into it. Uh, if you want to do the things that I'll be showing you on the stream today uh, in OS X, uh, you'll want to install some flavor of Node, uh, preferably uh, LTS, uh, which you can get from nodejs.org. Uh, and I will be using the .NET CLI uh, and runtime and SDKs, uh, which you can get from .NET.Microsoft.com slash download. And just select... Uh, whatever platform that you want there. And those are both installers versus using something like brew or uh, some other technique for getting them on your system. Uh, those are the, the straight, most straightforward ways of getting those things. Uh, today, we'll also be looking at um, the Create React app uh, NPM module that actually spins up a, a React app for you. Uh, and we'll also be using the .NET CLI, which um, primarily we'll be using the new command. So uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, let's jump right into it and pop back over here. I am done with my explainer. Anybody have any questions about that? No? Okay, cool. So I'm gonna jump into my terminal and set up uh, the basic project that we have that I want to use. And I'm going to start that with uh, cloning Broxburn. Copy that, and I'm gonna head over here to my terminal. Uh, get into source. All right, so on my uh, project card, uh, the first thing that I wanna initialize is um, a git ignore for this project. So I'm going to open the uh, project in Visual Studio Code. And of course my command line command did not open it the way I wanted it to, so I will do it the hard way. Mm, open folder Myself, Broxburn. I should have practiced that before I started. Okay, you guys can see uh, what I have so far. Uh, so I'm going to use uh, something that Little Bobby Tables showed me uh, last week that I think is totally awesome, uh, which is a uh, extension to generate a uh, .gitignore file. So I'm going to uh, generate it. And uh, I do want Visual Studio Code and Mac OS. Uh, I also want to include uh, Node. And C Shop. Let's see what that gives us. Okay. Bam. 
There goes my lovely git ignore file. Uh, so that's done. Uh, I also want to create a uh, an editor config, but I'm just going to create it empty, uh, empty for right now until I have something to add in there. Right, and then I'll go ahead and commit those things. So now back over to the browser. Uh, I'm going to start by creating the uh, React app. To my editor. And I popped open the uh, shell here inside Visual Studio Code. See the files that I have. And um, I'm going to be using a node module called Create uh, React App. So if I do uh, npm, LS global to show you the uh, the globals that I have. Bam, and that is huge. Let's uh, tone that down a bit. Zero. Only want the high level modules. All right, so I do have a uh, create react app uh, installed right here. Uh, and by making it a global, that means it's, it's always available on my command line. So um, global tools typically you use to generate other things for you. My keyboard, yeah. Um, if you look at my uh, post that I put up earlier, uh, there you go. Uh, it lists all the hardware that I'm using right now, uh, including my keyboard and mouse, which are both uh, razors, right? So uh, to use Create React, React App, uh, if you don't have it currently installed, you have npm, you just simply npm install dash g, and then the name of the module, right? That's not a copy. Derp. So create React app, bam, and that will uh, install it for you. And then you simply call it just like any other executable uh, on your system. So create React app dash H, and it will uh, spit out uh, help options for you. Uh, so here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to create a uh, client directory. And then run create react app. Uh, project directory right here. And basically what create react app is doing for me is it's creating a, a bare bones react project um, and setting it all up for me. So once it's complete, we should have a client folder, which we do. Uh, we have some node modules in there, which are automatically uh, ignored because we have a git ignore file here as well as my higher level git ignore file. So I may need to munge some of those. Um, we have a package.json that lists a few scripts. So uh, after having run the uh, having run the command, I'm ready to start hacking on the uh, web code or React code right now. And to do that, you issue a npm command. So npm start. Uh, 
Yeah. Fire it up in Chrome. And if I come back over to my browser, we should see that loading up uh, pretty quickly. Yeah. So it creates a, a very bare bones React application for you. If I go back over here to the, uh, to the editor, you'll see under source, we basically have an app object uh, that is the screen that we just saw in the browser, a uh, sample unit test, um, an index, which is the entry point for the entire React application. Um, and that's about it. It's, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, to begin you know, a React project using the Create React app. So I'm gonna go ahead and kill that for right now. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and add all that. So that's basically all the files that it created for me, right, under the, the client directory. Back over to my browser real quick. That is done. Anybody have any specific questions about uh, what I just did or is it pretty self-explanatory? Okay, cool. So I will move on to uh, creating the React or the web API application. Uh, I will go back over uh, into my terminal or actually, I can do this directly from the editor now. So now that I have a client application, I want an API application. So uh, just like with Create React App, uh, the .NET Core CLI allows you to do pretty much the exact same thing that I just did, but for building a uh, ASP.NET uh, Core application. So you do that with the... Um, .NET CLI, helps if I can type. So .NET dash H. And when you uh, run the CLI, you can, uh, like I did, um, pull up the help file, which will show you all of the commands that are available to, to run right out of the box. Uh, and the one that we're interested in is this new, we're gonna create a new project. So if I say .NET new help, it's going to give me a list of project types that I can create directly from the, uh, the command line. And the one that I'm interested in is a ASP.NET Core Web API project. So I want to use a short name of Web API. And if you notice up here, um, there are templates for React apps uh, and Angular apps, uh, but one of the things that uh, that does, let me show you real quick in the browser. Come back over here. And if I go to my repos, come down to Zeek Core, uh, using that React app template directly, uh, what it does is it stuffs your React app in a subfolder of the overall project. Um, and while that seems nice, um, if you're doing that in Visual Studio, maybe that's a nice thing to do. Um, but maybe at some point in the future, I'm not going to want to deploy these things together. Uh, so I'd rather keep them separate and just have them interop with each other in such a way that it doesn't make working locally uh, highly painful. So uh, instead, I'm going to keep them separate where my React app is in the client directory uh, right off the root of my repository, and my web API project is inside an API uh, subdirectory right off the root of the project. So back to the editor. And so once again, I want that web API. new web api dash h i don't remember what the uh, command line option is to specify where put it so i'm looking real quick Let's see 
Is it O? Yeah. It is dash O for output. So output, I want that in an API direct. I saw red text. Invalid switch zero. I'm so used to substituting a zero for O's now that uh, I got a little hose there. There we go. .NET new API. And so uh, in my editor over here, you notice uh, that I have now an API directory. There's a bunch of .NET goo in there. Uh, but just as with the Create React app uh, command line tool, uh, this one basically gives you a project that is ready to run right out of the box. So to do that, all you have to do is run the command .NET run and pass it the directory of the thing you want it to run. And I actually need to pass the flag project. And you guys are quiet. Other than calling me a nerd. Okay, so the uh, web API is now listening on uh, port 5000 and also listening for HTTPS requests under 5001. Uh, if I bring that up into my browser and show that to you, I get the nasty Chrome warning because it doesn't actually give you a good uh, certificate. But I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And it's not loading. Uh, that's because uh, it's an API. It's not a web page, so there's nothing hanging off the root. Uh, everything's underneath uh, API slash values. So you see I get two values back, so the application is actually running. If I come back to my editor, uh, you can see here underneath controllers, I have a values controller. Off of that, I have a single method called uh, git. Um, so the way the URL is constructed is right up here at the very top of the, the file. I'm gonna start my route with API, so everything under API. Uh, and then the next segment of my URL is gonna be the controller name. Uh, with the word controller stripped off of it. So we get values. Uh, and the default action is going to be a get. So it returns me those. Pretty simple, right? Uh, pretty straightforward. But, uh, well, let me not go there yet. Let's hop back over to the browser and go back to my uh, board, my project board. And I've got that done. Oh, wait, I didn't commit it yet. Let's commit it my editor I cannot spell clear this and there you can see that that's the sum of all of the uh, files that are created by using the .NET new template uh, it's not not very much and there are only two three code files that we care about there's a uh, program.cs uh, right here, which is your main entry point uh, into the executable. Uh, and it does a little bit of goo to create a web host builder. Uh, and the thing we care about here is that we're telling it to use this startup type. And that startup type basically defines some configuration stuff. Um, and some of the configuration stuff it does is like the HTTPS redirect is there by default. Uh, telling it to use the MVC framework, which uh, in .NET Core, web API has been merged into the MVC framework. Um, so it's a little bit of configuration goo about how your app is constructed. Um, and then your controllers, which right now we only have one controller. We have as many controllers as we can. Right? So I'm gonna go ahead and commit that. Done. All right, so back over to the browser. I'm going to get rid of this card. I've completed that. Uh, and now the final uh, step that I wanted to accomplish today, um, it's if I want to run the entire application um, on my local machine. So I want to fire up uh, the React application and the web API application and have them be, be able to communicate with each other. Um, out of the 
box, um, that's going to be kind of hard because I have to go in and open one terminal, start the React application, open another terminal, start the uh, MVC application, potentially open a third terminal for being able to uh, interact with it, executing curl, that sort of thing. Uh, but there is in uh, ASP.NET uh, this thing called uh, React or SPA services. And what it allows you to do is uh, when you're running debug builds, you can actually host the React application directly inside uh, your MVC application to where they behave like one app together. Uh, and I'll show you how to wire that up real quick. So uh, we want to configure the API to use SPA services, um, and then we will be done. Oh, and create a script to be able to fire it all off together. Back to my editor. I'm gonna give us a little real estate here real quick. And I need to bring up uh, some notes to remember all the pieces that I need to do here. Client. All right, so I'm going to go into my API, the startup project. And right underneath where it says uh, use MVC, I'm going to tell it to use uh, a SPA. And that's going to take a delegate. And if I can remember my delegate syntax. Yeah. And really all this cares about is uh, where the source path is for my uh, React application. And source path. And if you remember, I am up uh, a directory away, so I will go up one and use client. All right, and then uh, I add a switch in here basically to say if I am uh, running in development mode, uh, debug mode, um, I want to kick off the uh, React apps uh, node process. And to do that, you just say spa use React. using single quotes. I've been doing node too much. Start. Uh, and this is in a, a spa services namespace. So if I come up to the top, I want to add, let's see, it's pnet core, maybe right there. And now my warning has gone away. And just to verify, I want to make sure that this will build. So I'm going to .NET build dash dash project API. All right, well, don't do that. Build API. Hey. So that does build for me. So I am going to uh, try doing a .NET run and see if it will come up. There. All right, so that fired up and it is once again listening on uh, these ports. And if you notice, the output is becoming a little uh, different. Uh, now that the Web API server is stood up, it's actually calling out to NPM and starting up the React app as well. So I get one command, I get them both stood up. 
Uh, and the nice thing about that is they're both on the same uh, uh, port. So I don't have to worry about any cores concerns or anything like that. So let's go ahead and hop over to my browser. Take a look at that. All right, so there's my React app. We can see it's uh, executing on 5001 now. And if I add an API values to that, I get my values. So now I have both the .NET application running for my backend services with my static uh, React app as serviced as a front end for that application, All right? Oh, and you guys can't see that because it's in a different browser. So let me do that demo for you over again real quick. There we go. So here's my React app running on 5001. If I put in API values, there's my API, All right? Pretty cool. So I will go back to my editor and let's go ahead and commit that. Amir, you mentioned my uh, my keyboard. Is the clicking too loud? Is it distracting? All right, head it back over to my browser. Uh, we have configured the API to use spa services. Um, I don't like having to type that command in and remember what the command is because I don't know if I need um, uh, the project flag or not, I always forget and have to type the same thing three times. Uh, so I personally solve those problems with uh, scripts. So I create a script directory. I'm sure you guys can see my editor. So get out of there, get out of there. I want a scripts directory. And in there, I want to create a start script. And let's see, I want to echo. Right. And that's gonna be a .NET, Oops. .NET run project. like that and I always have to look this up too which is what the hell is a shebang syntax because I always forget it isn't it isn't it something like this let's see if I can remember it from the beginning it's like hash bang whack USR bash node, no, USN ENV, isn't it? That's gonna be my guess. I'm gonna start writing it like that every time I do a script and then go look it up because I can't remember. So bear with me for a second. No one's giving me the answer, man. You guys are horrible pair programming friends. Ooh, I was really close. Really close. Bam. Use a bam bash. So I also need to uh, make this file executable. So let's see. Hmod. If I can type plus X on scripts start all right and before i actually run it i want to verify that that's going to give me what i want so scripts start bam says it's starting the web api let's go ahead and back that edit out run it again and we should see it all fire up all 
All right, so it does work. Oh man, I haven't used rake in probably six years. I remember it got all fashionable in .NET to do build scripts using rake, uh, but I haven't really done that since then. Uh, so if we go back to my browser real quick and we take a look at the list of tasks, I've got uh, this task done. And really the last task I have uh, is questions. If anybody has any questions about what they just saw um, and maybe about what I'm going to be doing with this project. Uh, while you guys are furiously typing on your keyboards uh, random questions for me to answer, uh, the next session that I have set up is on Friday at one o'clock. Uh, and I don't have a team meeting scheduled immediately before that. So, um, it should actually hit on time. Uh, and in that session, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this bare bones, um, what I've heard referred to in a, a book called A Walking Skeleton of an Application. And I'm going to get that building in a, a Docker container, uh, deploying and creating a Docker container uh, to host the application itself. Uh, and then setting up a continuous delivery into uh, Zite. Uh, now's platform. Uh, so if you are interested in how I'm going to do that, uh, keep an eye on the projects tab on the Brock, Brocksburn uh, project. And I'll be putting in some cards in there of like how I think I'm going to approach that problem uh, in preparation for uh, doing that screencast. So let's see. Being a nerd is awesome. Clicky keyboards. I do too. But uh, I work from home. And sometimes my team on meetings don't like it. Like um, when I was, anytime I'm in a meeting with Glenn Block, um, he tells me to mute myself because he can't stand the sound of the clicky key, which is pretty hilarious. Um, there is no music uh, other than my awesome keyboard um, because I think I might get muted with the type of music that I would play. And I'm kind of concerned about that. In fact, the the intro like timer 10 minutes has some music on there that's probably going to get me uh, muted. So I need to rework that, rethink it. Um, do Albacore. Uh, I remember that project. I don't think I ever did anything with Albacore. Like I, I was doing rake task like at a very early stage before Albacore was a thing. Let's see. Yes, Glenn is a filthy savage. He actually left Auth0 officially uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, and he just started a new gig as the director of uh, product management at DocuSign. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, if you guys don't have uh, any other questions, um, I think that's going to be my initial stream. I'm going to call it quits right there. And I want to thank all of you for joining me um, as I try to figure out this streaming thing. So hopefully it wasn't too embarrassing watching me try to tap, type. All right. Well, I will see you all later. Bye.